acting like that. Be kind. You're going to make me look bad. <laughs> That's not the way our daddy is. That's not the way our father is. He's never angry. And he has promised not to punish us, meaning hurt us or harm us. His discipline or his correction is a change of thinking. It's helping us to get his perspective on the matter. It's helping us to see one more time who we are. He's correcting the way we're viewing something. Because he loves us. And he knows if we don't change the way we see it, we're going to be hurting. See, if I continue to see what I saw yesterday in my own view, (laughs) and I continue down that thinking pathway, you know where I would have ended up? With the pigs. That's where I would have ended up. And my father would have let me go there. He wouldn't have sent me there. That wasn't his plan for me. But he loves me enough to let me make my own choice. And at any moment, he's going to be there when I decide to come to my senses and turn back. He's going to be there not to fault find, not to make me feel bad, not to tell me, well, if you wouldn't have, li- if you would have listened to me, you wouldn't have been sleeping with the pigs. I mean, isn't that the way we do? If you would have just listened to me, then you wouldn't be in this mess. That's not the way our father is. He doesn't even remind you of your mess. He reminds you who you are. He's such a loving daddy. He's such a loving father. I know religion has not portrayed him this way, but it is true. I'm telling you, it is true. And it's the only way to live free from fear and insecurity in this world is to understand the true heart of the father that came to us through Jesus. He revealed who he was through Jesus. Our daddy will never be angry with us. Number three, religious legalism teaches that God keeps track of your sins. But Jesus reveals a daddy who rejoices over you and he'll never remember your sins again. I remember growing up thinking that when I got to heaven, all my badness was going to be portrayed before me for the whole world to see. That's what I believed. That's not a daddy who forgets your sin. That's a daddy that's keeping track of it and just ready when you get up to the judgment seat of Christ to show you all the bad you've done. But the truth is this, Hebrews 8, 12, I will forgive their wickedness and I will never again remember their sins. Isaiah 44, 22, I have swept away your sins like a cloud. I have scattered your offenses like the morning mist. Oh, return to me. For I have paid the price to set you free. (laughs) Zephaniah 3.17, The Lord your God is in the midst of you, a mighty one, a Savior who saves. He will rejoice over you with joy. He will rest in silent satisfaction. And in his love, he will be silent and make no mention of past sins or even recall them. He will exult over you with singing. That's the kind of daddy we have. So when you fail... When you have a bad attitude, right? When you're not agreeing with the Father, just run up to him and say, Father, I don't feel like agreeing with you right now. I really don't feel like it. And I know I need your help because I don't want to sleep with the pigs. Seriously, that's how I talk to him. I know, I know the prodigal son story. I know the father did not keep him from sleeping with the pigs. I know the reason why he slept with the pigs is because he, he decided to disagree with what his father said about him. He, he took on a different identity than what the father gave him. He didn't see himself as a son, a beloved son of the father. He thought the world had something better to offer. His way was better. He was going to take care of himself. He was going to make those people act right. You know, that's why he slept with the pigs. I don't want to sleep with the pigs. And I know, I know that if I continue down the path of disagreeing with my daddy, if I continue down the path of my own way and my own thoughts, that's where I will end up. Not because my daddy doesn't love me, but because he loves me enough. 
to let me go my way. Anyone who loves you does not force you to love, you, love them back. Anyone who loves you, the Father, just like you, want your children to freely love you in return. That's what the Father desires as well. I mean, how many of us as parents, we poured our love into our children our whole lives? Poured our love into them, took care of them, you know, loved them. We would die for them, right? But we don't want them forced to love us in return. We want them to respond to the love that we've given to them. True? We love him because he first loved us. Thank you, Father. He doesn't remember your sins. He rejoices over you as singing. Can you imagine that? You come to him with your bad attitude, and he just starts singing over you. He just starts reminding you again. Daughter, I love you. Son, you're perfect in my sight. Daughter, you're wonderful, beautiful, perfect in every way. Remember who you are. Remember what I say. Because that's the answer. That's the answer to whatever pain we're feeling. It's the answer to whatever guilt and shame we're feeling. Is listening to the Father's love. What is the Father saying? Through Jesus. What is he saying? Father, help me. Help me. I need your help. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Your Abba Father comforts you with his promise to help you and strengthen you in every trial life brings. Isaiah 41.10 Fear not, there is nothing to fear, for I am with you. Do not look around you in terror and be dismayed or be discouraged. For I am your God. I will strengthen and harden you to difficulties. Yes, I will help you. Yes, I will hold you up and retain you with my victorious right hand of rightness and justice. I want you to think about right now a situation in your life that you're dealing with that's caused you discouragement. Just think about it for a moment, okay? And then I want you to listen to what the Father says. Listen to what he says. Fear not. There is nothing to fear, for I am with you. Do not look around you in fear and be discouraged, for I am your daddy. I will strengthen and harden you to difficulties. Yes, I will help you. Yes, I will hold you up and retain you with my victorious right hand of rightness and justice. He's going to make everything right in your life. Whatever it is you're dealing with, whatever struggle you're facing, what the Father says, He's going to bring you out of it. He doesn't leave you there. Let me ask you something. Did he leave the prodigal son <laughs> in the pigsty? Did he say, go back and learn? You know, you, no. What did he do? He helped him. He restored him. He set him on a high place of honor. I mean, it's just an amazing thing. The father wants to help us. He says, I'll help you. Don't, don't be fearful what you're looking at. Don't be discouraged. I'm with you. I'm in you. Yes, I will help you. I will work this out for your good. Yes, I will. And listen to this, what he says. It, um, oh, Hebrews 13, 5, I skipped it. <laughs> Religious legalism teaches us that our sins separate us from God. But Jesus reveals a daddy who will never leave you, nor fail you, nor let you down. Listen to this. For God himself has said, I will not in any way fail you, nor give you up, nor leave you without support. I will not, I will not, I will not in any degree leave you helpless, nor forsake, nor let you down, relax my hold on you. Assuredly, I will not. There's been natural daddies that have left, left their children have let them down, have failed them. But this daddy, our real daddy, our eternal daddy, says, I will never leave you. 
nor give you up, nor fail you, or leave you helpless, or let you down. Relax my hold on you. I will not. And you say, yes, Father, you will not. You will not. You will not fail me. You will not let me down. Relax your hold on me. You will not. Yes, that's what it means to receive his love. Whatever the Father says yes to you about, you say yes to the glory of God. Amen? Amen. Jeremiah 29, 11. God's, your Abba Father's plan is to prosper you, not to harm you. Religion tells you that God brings harm into our lives. Doesn't it? Has anybody ever heard that God brings sickness or trials or hurt and harm into your life? Okay. Let's see what the Father says. Okay, religion says that, but let's see what the Father says. Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. That's your daddy's plans for you, to prosper you. Yes. So he says yes. Yes, my daughter. Yes, my son. My plan is to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you a hope and a future. And you say, yes, yes Father. You yes. love me. Your plan is to prosper me. Your plan isn't to hurt me. Your plan isn't for disaster. Your plan isn't to harm me in any way. Your plan is to prosper me and to increase me more and more and to bless me and to give me a hope and to give me a future. You love me, Father. Do you know what I want for my own children, Connie Witter? I want to see them prosper. I want to see them happy. I want to see them at peace. I don't want to see them hurt. I don't want to see them sick. I don't want to see them in pain. And the Father God loves infinitely more than I'm ever capable of loving outside of him. I'm just talking about the natural. If I even wasn't a Christian, if I didn't even have Jesus in my heart, I would still want to see my children prosper. Do you understand what I'm saying? As a sinner, I would want to see my children <laughs> prosper. The Father is righteous, and he wants to see his children prosper. That's his plan. How do we receive that love? How do we walk in that peace? How do we experience the plan of the Father? Yes, Father. Yes. Yes, you love me. Yes. You'll help me. Yes. You'll adjust my attitude. Yes. You'll help me see differently. Yes. Yes. Because you love me. All right, I think I'm running out of time. Your Abba Father will meet all your needs. Oh, Jesus, help me. Okay, we're going we're gonna to wrap this up. Therefore I tell you, Matthew 6, 25-33, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body. What you will wear is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes. Look at the birds of the air. Just look at them. They don't sow, and they don't reap, and they don't store away in barns, and yet your Heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? See, this is the heart of Jesus. He's revealing to us the heart of the Father. He's saying, listen to me. Look at the birds of the air. They don't sow. They don't reap. Look at the flowers. They don't toil, and they don't labor. But the Father clothes them, and the, and the Father feeds the birds. Is he not going to take care of you? You who are so much more valuable than the birds and the flowers. You are more valuable than God's creation. He's going to take care of you. He loves you. Verse 20, uh, let's see, I'm going to go down to verse 29. Yes, I tell you. Oh, wait, wait a minute. 
you, Jesus. Why, and why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is, God, is, if that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, what shall we drink, what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. When I think about seeking first his kingdom and his righteousness, we know that his kingdom is righteousness, joy, peace, and the Holy Spirit. That is what his kingdom is. But I think about the Apostle Paul when he said, he gives up all of his good works, everything. He, he was talking about how he kept the law or the religious traditions of his forefathers to the T. He did it all right as far as his tradition, his forefathers were telling him. But he called it all dung, all dung, all poop. Everything he did good, everything he tried to do to be the best, to try to be approved, everything he tried to do, he just counted it all as dumb for taking on the righteousness that Jesus gave to him. He gave up his righteousness to embrace the righteousness that the Father gave. And that's what Jesus is talking about right here. Let go of your own self-righteousness. Let go of your trying to be approved by the Father by anything that you do. Let go of trying to measure up to some standard you think that he's trying to get you to measure up to, and just embrace his gift of righteousness, which makes you perfect and loved and favored in his sight. Just seek first to embrace relationship, to embrace intimacy, to, to say yes to Jesus, to say yes to the Father. And then all these other things that the world seeks after, food and clothes and their needs being met, it'll be added to you. It'll just, it'll just, the Father, you know what I'm saying? You don't have to worry about all of that. Your only to-do list, because we all like those, don't we? Your only to-do list is to believe and receive and say yes and to the Father, to receive what he's given. That's your only thing. What does that mean? Yes, Father. If you said you won't fail me, you won't fail me. If you said you'll help me, you'll help me. If you said you'll take care of me, you'll take care of me. If you said you love me, you love me. Amen. If you said that you'll never let me down, and if you said that I'm wonderful and approved, then yes, Father, I receive what you say of me. That's what it looks like to seek first the kingdom of God. That's not what religion would tell you, is it? But it's true. <laughs> Last scriptures in Galatians. So now that you have this loving relationship with your Abba Father, don't go back to religious legalism. See, that's what the Apostle Paul was saying in this Galatians, in Galatians chapter 4. He says, you have become a, a child of God, heir of everything that belongs to him. You have come entered into a yes relationship with the Father. Don't go back to religion. Don't go back to trying to gain your approval by what you do. Don't go back to living like a fearful slave. Listen to what he says, Galatians 4, 8. I'm going to read through verse 12. Before you Gentiles knew God, you were slaves to so-called gods that do not even exist. Now, however, that you have come to be acquainted with him and understand and know the true God, or rather to be understood and known by God, how can you turn back again to the weak, beggarly, worthless, elementary things of all religions before Christ came? He's like, now that you know the heart of the Father, the Apostle Paul had been teaching them the heart of the Father. 
Do you understand that? This is Galatians he, and Romans, and he was teaching them that they're righteous, that the Father's not holding their sins against them, that they're free from shame and condemnation. I've been telling you this, he says. I've been sharing with you. You know the Father's heart towards you through Jesus, and the Father knows you. You've been, you've been called into a, a loving, peaceful, intimate, secure relationship with the Father. Why do you want to go back and be slaves to religion? <laughs> the, listen to how he says it. How can you turn back again to the weak, beggarly, begging, you know, like you're a beggar, like you're a pauper? How can, why would you want to go back to living like a pauper when you're a princess or a prince in the kingdom of God? <sighs> Who, it, okay. How can you turn back again to the weak and beggarly and worthless elementary things of all religion before Christ came, whose slaves you once more want to become? Oh my goodness. And then, then the, okay, how were they doing this? This is, this is the question. He was saying, why do you want to go back to this? Why do you want to become, go back to being a slave when you're a child of God? And he says in verse 10, you are trying to earn favor with God by observing certain days or months or seasons or years. That's how they were going back. They started trying again to measure up to something when they already measured up. I fear for you. Perhaps all my hard work for you was for nothing. I feel that way sometimes. Dear brothers and sisters, listen to Apostle Paul. I plead with you. Oh, my goodness. It's, it's that 2 Corinthians 5 again, 5, 17 through 21. I plead with you. I plead with you. I beg of you to live as I do in freedom from trying to measure up and trying to gain God's favor by the law. For I have become like you Gentiles, free from those laws. The Apostle Paul was admonishing, pleading with them to forsake religion and embrace relationship. He was pleading with them, don't live like a fearful slave when you're a son of God. He was pleading with them, don't try to earn God's approval when you already have it. Don't run from God and feel ashamed and, and, and guilty when he set you free to come into his, his arms and hear how much he loves you and live like Jesus did with the Father. You know the reason why Jesus came? So that we could enjoy an intimate, personal, trusting relationship with a daddy who loves us. That's why he came, to reconcile us back to the Father, that we could run to him whether we mess up or whether we, whether we need to hear. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter. He's the daddy you've always wanted to have. He'll never change his opinion of you. He'll never be angry with you. His plan is to prosper you. He'll never fail you. He says he'll help you. He always says yes. He loves you unconditionally, and when he corrects you or disciplines you, however you want to say the word, it's correcting the way you see him or the way you see yourself. That's how he corrects you. That's how our daddy works in our lives, constantly wanting us to see who he really is. Constantly wanting us to embrace who we truly are so that we can live free from the fearful religious slave mentality and live in the security and confidence of the Father's love. And all we have to do to live here is to run to him every time we're afraid, run to him every time our hearts are, you know, those negative feelings are coming up in our heart. Run to him! Jesus, I... Jesus, I need you. Father, help me. I need you today. I need to hear you say one more time that you love me. We all need to be loved. 
And we have, I mean, the gospel is the greatest love story ever told. And religion has made it so yucky, made it so separating from God. Religious separates us from God. Religion makes us have a negative view of him. Religion puts lies in our hearts and makes us feel unworthy and insecure and sad and depressed. But Jesus freed us from that fearful way of living so that we could live in the peace that the Father has for us simply by saying, yes, yes, Father, you are there. You won't leave me. You love me. Help me. Live as a daughter and son of the King. Forsake religion and embrace relationship and don't ever go back. In Jesus Awake to righteousness. You are qualified, innocent, forgiven, accepted, approved, and loved. Join Connie Witter as the journey through the Book of Romans continues in Awake to Righteousness Volume 2 and be empowered by grace to live a righteous life. Available now, Awake to Righteousness Volumes 1 and 2. Also available as a group Bible study package. Call 918-994-6500 or visit ConnieWitter.com to order or download your copy today. Because of Jesus Ministries introduces our first children's storybook, Are You a Chicken Head? by Connie Witter. This fun little book asks the big life question, what's true about you? Mommy, that girl called me a chicken head. Is that true, Victoria? Are you a chicken head? What does Jesus say about you? For many years, I have shared this true story to encourage others to believe what Jesus says about them. I pray this book will inspire parents, grandparents, and children alike to confidently respond. I believe what Jesus says about me. Order this delightful book today. Call 918-994-6500 or go online at becauseofjesus.com where Bible studies are always in the light of Jesus. Because of Jesus Ministries is your resource for grace-filled, Jesus-focused Bible studies and curriculum for all ages. Adult Bible studies, books, devotionals for girls and teens, DVDs, CDs, and MP3s. We offer group Bible study packages as well. Connect with us and check out our many free resources online at ConnieWitter.com, where Bible studies are always in the light of Jesus.